So here we are on this uh, Tuesday morning. I uh, hope your day is going well so far. Stay with us until half past nine. Our top story is this. An airlift evacuation of British nationals from Russia in the event of civil war would be impossible, according to the Foreign Secretary. Now, his comments came as the truce between Vladimir Putin and the leader of the Wagner Group appeared to fracture, with the Russian president calling for the organisers off the coup to be brutally punished. He did this in a televised address. The organisers of the rebellion, betraying their country, their people, betrayed those who were lured into the crime. They lied to them, pushed them towards death, under fire, to shoot their own people. It was precisely this outcome, fratricide, that Russia's enemies wanted. Both the neo-Nazis in Kiev and their Western masters and all sorts of national traitors. They wanted Russian soldiers to kill each other. So, but they apparently was all kiss and make up and everything was friendly and happy. <laughs> Obviously not. Mm, exactly. Well, the address followed a message from the mercenary leader Prigozhin in what he called his advance on Moscow. He described it as a masterclass and said the Russian public were disappointed when he stopped. So, in America, President Joe Biden has spoken overnight addressing Putin's uh, like, accusations that the West was involved in the mutiny. I also convened our key allies on a, on a Zoom call to make sure we're all on the same page. It's critical that we're in a coordinated in our response and coordinated in what we to anticipate. We agree, they agreed with me that we had to make sure we gave Putin no excuse, let me emphasize, we gave Putin no excuse to blame this on the West or to blame this on NATO. We made clear that we were not involved we had nothing to do with it. This was part of a struggle within the Russian system. Struggle within the Russian system. Let's find out more now as we cross to Ukraine for reaction. Kira Rudik, who leads the Golos party in Ukraine's parliament. Good morning to you. Good morning, Iman. Good morning, Isabel. Thank you so much for having me today. An absolute pleasure. And look at the intrigue here. This honeymoon didn't last long, did it? Well, sure. Let's make it very clear. There are no good guys there. It is a fight between one group of Russians that wanted to come here and kill us and another group of Russians that wanted to come here and kill us. And uh, when the coup was on, we were vouching for both teams here in Ukraine because the more helicopters they take down inside Russia, the more planes, the more tanks, uh, the less would come here and try to commit all the war crimes and destroy us. But the important thing that the world have observed is that Putin's power is extremely weak. You know, it reminds me the Wizard of Oz when, uh, when, when the great and terrible turned out to be just an old, weak man. So this is exactly um, what is happening in Russia when Prigozhin was able to show that Putin is not invincible, that Putin can be taken down and you just need like a little bit more power. So, of course, every uh, distraction that Russians have out of the front uh, is uh, a good chance for us to push forward on a counteroffensive. And, of course, the destabilization of situation in Russia uh, is uh, something that um, would allow us to move forward. However, uh, I think everybody who watched uh, Putin's speech was surprised with the amount of the word West, Nazi, NATO, and which is making it obviously that the problem is just within Russia and they just cannot agree on themselves and uh, cannot um, create a stable situation. Of course, Kira Rudik, he also mentioned Ukraine in that address overnight and uh, suggesting that it was either Ukraine or the West that was behind this mutiny. So do you think that, you know, aside from trying to deal with the threat of, of a coup, he'll double down on Ukraine as a result of this latest effort? Well, just making it clear that Wagner Group that created uh, well, the clunch in the coup uh, was uh, one of the uh, key mercenary organizations that were fighting in Bakhmut and on the Eastern Front. Uh, they are known to be ruthless and to be an extremely dangerous group. So uh, it doesn't add on any kind of logic how Ukraine could be behind 
them marching on Moscow. Mm. Um, like even if I'm trying to make it up in my mind and I cannot. Uh, Zelensky visiting the front line yesterday and, you know, absolutely clear that yesterday and this weekend has been good for Ukraine. Well, of course, um, like whatever destabilizes Russia and takes their eyes off the front uh, allows us to push forward uh, at the counteroffensive. Also, it uh, really demotivates uh, uh, their soldiers at the front who don't know like, if they like, will be not left alone or if their power would not change and then they will be prosecuted for, for what they are doing right now, right? Um, we, um, uh, we are applauding to President uh, being at the, the front lines and supporting our troops and uh, motivating them because we know that the counteroffensive is a, a very complicated uh, action and because we know that uh, right now our soldiers are in extreme danger moving through the minefields that Russians have put together over the last six months uh, and um, going through like really, um, really dangerous uh, thresholds. Kira Rudik, thank you very much indeed.